day two. How was Good, man. Um, very intense. I, li I like it, man. I like it a lot. High intensity, guys going hard. Guys just want to be better. We're competing every day. As long as we're competing, you know, the, the, the playbooks, the adjustments that we made offensively and defensively, they'll come. That's what these coaches are for. And as long as we're going as hard as we can, you know, we'll be fine. Or is it just a difference from day one? Is there anything you guys did differently with? No, not really. I think uh, guys, it's day two, so guys are a little bit more used to it. Uh, bigger plays today, a lot of big plays. I mean, I think that's something that will come as, as over time when we get more used to everything going on. Who made some of those big plays? Who made some? Yeah. You know, the dog pound, running backs, we do that all the time. Uh, receivers making big plays, quarterbacks looking good, man. Defense, interceptions, you know, I, I, be honest, it's the whole team, man. All the skilled guys and the, and the defensive line, offensive line making big plays, too. And so you've had three different coaching staffs now in, in three years. What's mm -hmm. that been like? Dude? Just as a person having to, you know, obviously yeah. Ohio State and come here with Fedora and then mm -hmm. now he's gone and you got Mac Brown. What's that been like for you? I think it's, I think it's good. Um, you know, I learned a lot from uh, from each staff. I learned a lot, uh, especially up at Ohio State. You know, I learned a lot last year with Coach Fedora. I experienced a different season, obviously, mm -hmm. last year. And, and I'm hoping to experience a similar season to the, what I experienced up at Ohio State this coming year. So, I mean, it's, it's been good. I've taken a lot in from a lot of great coaches. You know, I, I don't think a lot of guys can say, you know, play for Urban Meyer, Larry Fedora, yeah. and Mac Brown. So, you know, I think I'm just honestly just blessed to be able to say that. Not to discredit the old staff, but mm -hmm. does this feel, under Mac Brown, does it feel more maybe like it did at Ohio State under Urban Meyer? To yeah, yeah, for like sure, that? for sure, and I, and I think it comes from you know Coach Brown being that championship type coach, and, uh, and he, he's been there, he's been there, and uh, he knows what it takes, and he's he's bringing that here to Carolina. And Urban Meyer's coming back to speak at the <laughs> high school. Cause what's your, what's your relationship like with him? Can you just talk about that. Yeah, it's good. I haven't talked to him since I left, uh, but but it's been it was good while I was at Ohio State. You know, we understood the the parting ways thing, and then what I needed to do in order to further my career in football and in education and all that. And I had some family issues, so he was cool with that. And you know, me and Coach Meyer, we're good dudes. We're he, we're good friends when you say you have to get used to it mm -hmm. what, what what is it it's just uh <laughs> it would be the, the changes in practice you know yeah it's not a tremendous change it's just it's just how these coaches want to operate and each staff is going to be different guys like right. things a certain way and and you know we're getting used to it now uh but we're, we're getting used to how they like it and we're operating on their terms you had a laser eye surgery mm -hmm. also just kind of what went into that decision? How much have you benefited from it? Yeah, so it was actually, it wasn't actually corrective surgery. I had some holes in my retinas, both of my retinas, and uh, they had to go in and repair it with the laser. It, it was a 25 minute surgery. Felt kind of weird, you can feel the laser in the back of your head. Man. And it's uh, a pretty good headache afterwards, but I mean, it, it turned out good. Every now and then I'd get floaters and I'd see, you know, random little black things floating in there and they weren't actually there. So that just kind of closed those up and helped me out seeing why. And so, you know, Nick Polino's moved to center mm -hmm. um, recently. Can you speak about that move for him and how he's <laughs> adjusting to it? Uh, Nick's good, man. <laughs> Nick's been good. Nick's been real good. Uh, I think it'll be a good move for him. Uh, you know, he's commanding it, giving us signals. We're seeing him. He's, he's loud on the office a lot. And you want a center that's communicating with the guys in the backfield. That makes everybody on the same page. That puts everybody on the same page and makes everything easier, flows better on offense. At the end of the season, Javante kind of had a good little couple yeah. games there. What have you seen from him this spring to sort of build on that? Carried over, man. He carried it over, and, and I think, you know, that makes our running back room even more deadly. Uh, when Javante is on top of his game, when Jordan's on top of his game, Mike on top of his game, and I'm on top of my game, you know. And then we got British Brooks. You know, British is a guy people don't talk about much because he didn't he didn't get a lot of time last year. But he's, I think, British is on the same level as the other guys in the room. Uh, so I think this running back room with Javante and British and those guys coming along, I think, honestly, we have we could be the best running back unit in the country. How valuable just is that continuity? Have, not just in terms of guys nobody mm -hmm. really believing but also in the same coaches well. it, it's big time uh, having us together keeping everybody together and uh, having coach G back you know that that's very big you know that's something we wanted as a running back unit and uh, luckily we got that because I I think coach G is the best running back coach in the country um, and, and having him back is very very beneficial for our unit all right guys, I guess let's switch. Switch.